Welcome to the Gen Z show. I'm Abby Durheim and I'm joined today with our lovely host, Mr. James McLam. How are you, James? I don't think I've ever been called lovely host before, but now that I have been called lovely host, I'm doing really well. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's so good to be with here with you again. It's been a minute. It has been a while. It has been a while. Now, Abby, you fly a lot, don't you? I do. I have the worst luck when I fly, too. I am the queen of delays and cancellations and missing connections. It's rough. <laughs> well, have you ever been f afraid to fly before? Um. Yeah, definitely. It usually happens if I become afraid at some point. It's usually during the flight. Mm. And it's usually when we're like hitting a bunch of turbulence and or when I'm about to miss a connection. And it's less of I'm afraid more of what am I going to do when this happens oh. kind of thing. But yeah, no, definitely. It's kind of like the worst feeling ever because you, I, I can also understand I that. can't control my body temperature when I start to be get like when I become afraid on a flight, I get really, really hot and I'm like, feel very claustrophobic and that I'm just going to die. <laughs> well, our, our, my guest today is, uh, Lindsay Hall and Lindsay had a, a dr just a major fear of flying and so she did something very creative she or very innovative is she researched planes and how they actually fly and she discovered that there are four major forces that a plane has to interact with in order to be able to fly and when she was researching that she began to see that that was really a metaphor for how we succeed and how we reach our dreams in life and she made the statement that like a plane, we are not meant to stay on the ground. We are meant to fly. And so she wrote a book called The Four Forces of Life. And I think it is a brilliant, brilliant metaphor and, and a, a great story in that book about how youth, adults, all of us can really reach our dreams. So this was a great interview. And I, I'm glad that, that you're kicking this off with me because uh, Lindsay has really got uh, and she says she's still a little bit afraid, but having written this book, she's able to overcome it quite a bit. So I'm looking forward to this interview. I'm looking forward to listening to it, too. And with that, let's go ahead and dive right into our interview with Miss Lindsay Hall. Lindsay, welcome to the Gen Z Show. Thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Hey, let's do a shout out first to our mutual friend, Tammy. Tammy yes. Matheny, who connected us and you, your fellow author and stuff. So thank you, Tammy. Uh, the thank great you, Tammy. connector that she is. Yes, thank you. Well, our, uh, Lindsay, our audience heard a little bit uh, about you from me a little bit earlier, but they always are very excited to hear from our guests themselves an introduction. So if you wouldn't mind, introduce yourself to our Gen Z audience. Tell them about yourself. Yeah, well, my name's Lindsay Hall, as you guys probably know by now. And I am an author, speaker, and just really um, working hard just to spread, you know, positive message however I can, whether that's to youth or adults or, you know, people my age. I just want everyone to know that it's never too late or too early to go after your dreams or whatever it is that you want in life. So I, I, I didn't mean to smile there, but when you said youth or adults or people my age, I thought, well, well how does she classify herself? Is she between adults and I'm just and like youth? in the middle, you know, like I, I'm starting to feel old, but I'm not technically there yet, but I'm starting to feel the effects. Uh, if you're starting to feel old, I don't know how I should feel then. You're, I, don't I, know, I know. I'm wondering what's going on here. I don't know how I, how I like that. I don't know if I appreciate that or not. We might have to end this podcast <laughs> hey, right now. You've already you insulted me. We haven't even gotten into two minutes yet. I'm going to have to leave. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so one of the things that you and I discussed when we first met a few weeks ago was, was your book, The Four Forces of Life. And uh, I really like the concept of what you did there. But what I really liked was how you came up with the theme of the book, uh, you know, the inspiration for the book. So if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about where this book came from and how, uh, how, what inspired you to write it? Yeah. So funny enough, it's pretty ironic. I'm really scared of planes 
And I was on a flight going from, I live in Florida and I was going to visit my family in Ohio and I was on a flight going there and back and a whole month, like leading up to the flight, I was so scared. I mean, each day I'd probably waste an hour of my time just thinking about it, wondering what was going to happen. And I mean, just really ridiculous. Right. But apparently I developed this fear out of nowhere. I'm not even quite sure where it came from, but nonetheless, I had it. And so when I got back home after my trip, I was like, all right, like I got to get over this fear of flying and, you know, it's really impacting me. And cause you know, I want to travel and see the world that's, especially with speaking and being an author, that's really something you want to do is, you know, travel everywhere to spread your message. And, um, so by having these realizations, I was just told myself, okay, we got to get over this fear. So the first thing I decided to do was maybe if I research planes, maybe the less scared of them I would be, you know, the more I get to understanding how they work. So in doing that this, sense. yeah. I, and I was, I just like, you know what, maybe this will really help. And you know what, honestly, it truly has even just writing the book, even though I don't really like go into detail about maybe the things I learned. I mean, it's, it really has helped. But when I was learning about um, these, um, how planes work, I discovered these four forces of flight. And without these four forces, a plane cannot stay up in the air. And if it can't stay up in the air, it can't get off the ground. And then it can never make it to its destination. And these four forces are thrust, drag, weight, and lift. And when I was reading about each one of these and, you know, learning how they work, I started to realize, hmm, this like really goes with like life and like my story of whenever I decided to thrust forward or move forward towards what I wanted to do in life and the challenges that came and, you know, the waiting period that happened. And I just realized that I'm also not the only person that goes through this when they decide to chase their dreams or overcome fears or whatever it is they decide to do to launch out to have a more positive life or the life that they've always wanted. So I take these four forces and call them the four forces of life. And I tell them in a parable and just kind of explain how they work and how we can apply them to our life to get towards the life that we've always wanted to live. I love the tagline for the for the book, and it's also the tagline for your emails as well. Is it's like a plane we are not meant to stay on the ground. We are meant to fly. I, I yes. really love that. And and I think I, it was maybe in your intro or somewhere in there where you talked about 98% of people die without fulfilling their dreams. Yes. So is these four forces helping folks realize their potential in life? You know, what? How, how can we apply those four forces? Yeah, I mean, well, one, yes. So that quote kind of came to me when I was doing everything. I was like, well, like a plane, we're not meant to stay on the ground. We're meant to fly. We're not meant to just stay in one place and be where we were two months ago, two years ago, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. We're meant to be all that we were meant to be. And um, so that being said, I also discovered that fa fact too, about 98% of us die without fulfilling our dreams. And that's a really humbling, you know what I mean, realization. And so these four forces were meant to, if you are in a place where you really don't, maybe you don't know what it is you want to do. I mean, that's all, I mean, I didn't even know exactly what I was launching towards when I decided to thrust forward and chase my dream. I really wasn't sure what that was. I just knew I was unhappy and uncomfortable where I was. So this is really just helping people, these four forces, leave the place they are if they're unhappy in life or have the confidence to go towards whatever it is that they want to do and how to understand that there's going to be setbacks that occur, how to overcome those when they arise. Because a lot of times when we go forward, and like for me, I decided I want to become an author and speaker. When I decided to do that, a lot of challenges arose, right? Just like mm -hmm. anything. And a lot of people, and what I wanted to do at first was to turn around and retreat and go back to the comfortable lifestyle I was living. Because although I maybe wasn't happy, I had a steady paycheck. I knew it was going to pretty much happen each day. And that was comfortable for me. And so this just helps people know when you do these things, it is going to be uncomfortable. But one, let's move. You got to keep moving forward. How do we get through these hard times? And two, especially when nothing seems like it's really happening, maybe nothing really bad's happening, but also nothing really good's happening and you feel like you're not seeing any progress. This also just helps you to learn how to get through that waiting period, that you're developing your skills that you need to and how to keep pushing forward until you're eventually lifted up and you reach your destination. Well, let's, let's take those four forces and kind of break them down because I love yeah. this metaphor. Um, because when you were talking to stuff, I said, I can picture how... This metaphor works, you know, we're, we're, where I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, I'm at, at the airport and I want to get to Dallas Yeah. And, and I'm sitting there and it's got to take these elements in order to get for me to get to my destination. So how can these four forces help us get to our destination in life? 
Well, that's, yes, that's great. And I love that you picture that because that's exactly what I want everyone to picture. Like every time you go to the airport or see a plane, I want this to pop into your head. And so how you can do this is, so number one, we'll talk about thrust. So thrust um, in regards to a plane is what gets it moving forward, whether that's by jet engine, propeller, and that's what gets the plane going down the runway, right? We got to turn on the engines. And so during this phase, you kind of get to decide, okay, so for me, maybe I want to open up a gym or maybe I want to graduate high school and, you know, go to college and play soccer or play a sport, whatever it is that you want to do, you sit down and decide, I no longer want to be where I am. There's something greater out there for me. And I want to get that. And so you decide whatever it is and you write it down and go, okay, this is what it is. And during thrust, that's where you start creating that momentum. You start doing the little things that will help you get there. So if you want to open up a gym, you start learning from people that's done it right. You start reaching out and connecting with people. So for me being an author, I, sorry, you might want to edit that part out. I had the, I don't know if you heard it. My, uh, alarm system thing just went off. So, I hear you but, okay. Sorry about that. But anyways, so for me, um, I'll use myself as an example. When I went, decided to be an author, the first thing I did is I decided I wanted to be an author, right? Decided to thrust forward. Then I reached out to people like, um, John Gordon himself, and, you know, ask, like, how do I do that? What does that look like? And then that in return, John connected me to tons of people that does those things, right? And they were to help give me a clearer path of what that looks like. And then I started doing things every day, like writing every day, even exercising, even though maybe exercising has nothing to do with writing. It kind of does, right? Because it's that time where you're really like working your mind and your body and exercising. And then uh, two, we move on to drag, right? So after you thrust forward and decide whatever it is you want to do, you get this forced drag that comes into play and it tries to slow you down. And fun fact is drag isn't really necessary to achieve flight, but it's just there and it's annoying and it's there and it happens even when you just wake up and say, okay, I'm going to have a positive day today. There's always something that comes in and tries to, you know, drive a wedge in between you and having that positive day. And what it is, is it just teaches you, you have to create more thrust than drag in order to keep moving forward. So during it's those just something you have to overcome in order yes. to go forward. That's exactly it. And so when that happens, I pull back my thrust. I take a thrust, right? And I'm like, okay, this is what I set out to do. I remember what it is that was driving me forward. And I create more thrust than drag. And I say, I speak more positivity in my life. I write down more reasons of why I want this to be what, you know, what I want to achieve. And I just keep doing those things and reminding myself that drag is there. And the way we beat drag is recognizing it's never going to go away. And that we have to overcome it and you have to accept it because a lot of times and like me i really didn't want to accept that it was there i would just i wanted to ignore mm. it but when i did that i was never overcoming it and i was just kind of staying in the same place not really progressing so i had to accept that what in you, order give us an example of what you mean by i was ignoring it so that our audience can kind of visualize in their or make the comparison in their own life yeah so for me like a lot of things i guess maybe when things would happen I would kind of get really angry about them. I'm like, why does this have to happen to me? If that mm -hmm. makes sense. So maybe ignoring is a bad word, but I would just get angry and frustrated. And then it would, you know, the anger would subside and I wouldn't really address that issue. If that makes sense, I wouldn't create more thrust and jag. I would just let it be what it was. And then I'd move on to the next day. And maybe a few weeks later, later something else would happen and I'd be in the same boat, angry again, mad. Why me? But whenever I realized that it's always going to be there, these hard times are always going to happen, then I was really able to overcome it each time it happened because I didn't ignore it. I took it and I was like, okay, how do we get through this? How do we get over it? It's and almost I was like to, I'm trying to identify what these obstacles are going to be beforehand so that you're yes. prepared for them. Well, yeah. And then once you, because a lot of times, if you haven't noticed, like the same, pro, sort of like if you don't take care of an, you know, maybe an illness or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you cut yourself and maybe you have an infection and you're not taking care of it, right? You're not like cleaning it and addressing that it was even there. And it's just going to keep getting worse and worse and it's never going to heal. But when you address it right away and you take the steps right away, it heals a lot faster. And then you don't typically have to deal with that problem again, right? Because you kind of mm -hmm. know how to address it when it comes up again. And so that was a big thing for me is like you said, kind of now you know how to handle them if they come again, right? Because you've already learned the tools to handle the last problem that you dealt with. So, you know, just to, the same thing with in flight, they are prepared for what they anticipate the drag may be as they're flying the plane. Absolutely. So, it, yeah. And so in the phase of thrust, 
we, I talk about coming up with a flight plan and like a pilot mm -hmm. before they set out to reach their destination, they have a flight plan. So they come up with like, you know, the route that they're going to take to get them to their de destination, the safest, fastest and quickest way possible. But they're not alone in that process. They have the air traffic control system and they give it to them to review their flight plan. And for me, I like to consider air traffic control like God. So, right, I have this plan. This is what I want to do with my life. But God's the ultimate decider. He'll take that and he'll actually make it even better. He'll make you get there a lot quicker even than you would anticipate getting there. And sometimes it's slower, but he does that. So you get there the safest and fastest way possible, with the less, as less speed bumps as possible. And so that's kind of exactly what the flight plan is for is, you know, predicting those things, the, you know, the best that you can, you obviously can't predict everything, but you ultimately leave it up in air traffic control systems hands to, you know, make those adjustments when they arise. Nice. Nice. So that's the first two. What's the next? What's the third one? Yeah. So the next one is weight. So weight in regards to the four forces of flight is obviously the, you know, center pool of gravity on a plane, but I use it as weight, like W A I T like waiting in line. And so we all go through this waiting period in life, you know, whatever it is, you know, when we set out to chase our goals or dreams and during this waiting period, it feels like nothing's happening. Like time is just standing still and you really start to doubt yourself because you're not really seeing it. You feel like you're not seeing any progress and it can last days, weeks, years. Everyone's waiting period is different. And during this time of waiting, you learn preparation, perseverance, and patience. And I call them the three P's in the book. And these are what really help refine and define what it is that you want to do and to really test to see if this is what you actually want to do. Because if it isn't, I can promise you'll probably walk away. Because I know when I decided to go out down this path of writing and reading, not reading, but writing and speaking, I have had a lot of other ideas than just this. And when I was chasing those other ideas, I walked away very easily. But there's this like burning desire when you really know what it is that you want to do and you just can't quit. And that's where that waiting period really challenges you and shows you that. And then if you accept it and you're like, okay, I'm waiting, how can I make the best of the situation? Then you'll get the chance to learn patience, right? You're learning to be patient in this time. I have to go through this time so I can be prepared. Because if, for instance, let's say I was going to flight school and becoming a pilot and I was handed a keys to a plane immediately, I would probably crash it or I probably wouldn't be able to get off the ground. Right. But that's why that waiting period gives you those skills. So you are able to fly that plane. So you are able to get to that destination. And it also teaches you perseverance because you will always need that throughout life. So many things are always happening. So many challenges are happening and you need perseverance so you can get through anything that, you know, comes your way. It's a really important skill. So that's really what the waiting period is about. It really tests you to see if this is what you want to do. And then um, lift is super simple. That's the last force. And that's the best one, right? Because you that means you made it, right? You made it to that goal and you've reached your destination and it feels really great. But the important thing is to remember is it's not over after a lift, right? Like you may have reached that one goal or that one destination, and but that's not, it's not over with, right? That is going to give birth to even more greater dreams and goals that you have, even though it may not feel like it. And you may be like, okay, what's next? these four forces start all over again, right? And you learn new things that you want to do and find more different, you know, different purposes for your life. And it's just a constant cycle. So it's important to remember that just because you made it there doesn't mean it's all over with. You're going to have other dreams and goals to look forward to. They just take time sometimes to bloom. I love the way that you've given something that visually people can associate with their journey in life. That So often we give these... Uh, these great platitudes and steps to success. And, you know, we, we throw all these terms and words out there, these buzzwords, but we don't give them a visual gu uh, guiding to this. So yes. how is this in your book? How is this, how is this spelled out? How is this, you know, how do you, how is it delivered in your book? How, so how I deliver it, and I'm glad you asked that. Honestly, I probably should have started with that and my apologies, but to make it even easier is Peyton. He's a, he's a young guy. He was working actually as a manager at a gym. He absolutely loved it. And he really thought this is what he wanted to do with his life. He was like, this is it, right? And we've all been there. We're like, this is the thing. But then he started feeling uncomfortable. He started really not liking what he was doing. And he decided to take the leap of faith and go after what he always knew in his heart he wanted to do, but he never felt 
qualified to do it, which was become a pilot. So he decided to leave and chase his dream. And it just got really hard for him. He got really discouraged because as you know, a lot of kids, even in high school, middle school, college, you get really discouraged in the middle of all that. Because it's if when I remember when I was in middle school, for instance, it felt like high school was like a million years away, or it felt like graduating was because I was just so excited to graduate. And it can get really discouraging whenever it's not happening, you know, just like that. And so Peyton started to feel that way because it was another like three years before he graduated. He couldn't see that end goal in sight. He couldn't feel it. And so he ran into his professor on his way home, um, going back home for spring break. His professor happened to be going to the same place. And his professor teaches him about these four forces of life and how to apply them to his life and how to really pull himself out of this dark hole that he was in and to realize that his purpose is still his purpose. He just needs to wake up and realize like these bad things are going to happen and that's okay. It's just, how are we going to move forward through them? And so that's kind of how it's presented in the book. And it's really, a lot of it is in a scene on the plane of Mr. Glenn really just laying these out for him and giving him a lot of visuals and really simple too, because like you said, people give you all these words and, you know, and they're great, but I really just wanted to give something simple to everyone. Like super simple, very quick read. This is how you lay it out. And it really doesn't have to be that complicated because I've read so many books and honestly, I don't remember mm-hmm. half of what they said. And that's because it, it all is just so, it really can be so simple, hard to apply, but it can be broken down really simple for a lot of people. Yeah. That, that, I love what you just said. That last thing there, there are simple concepts in life that are to success but sometimes they are hard for us to implement. Yes. Um, a lot of times that's our own personal limitation too, that we try, try to make it out. So how can a young person, well, let me, let me take it in this direction first. So we got some listeners to, to, to this show. I know this, that, that work directly with youth. They're working with youth. They're helping them every day. And they, they're getting excited because in their mind right now, they're thinking, Hey, I, this is kind of something I can kind of coach them through. How can they help youth apply this? I'm putting you on the spot here. You may not be ready for this one, but how can we? How can someone coach youth with these four things? How would you recommend them do that? That's a great question and a challenging question, but that's what makes a good question. So for me personally, I had a youth mindset when I wrote this. I was writing this to my younger self. I was writing this to the me in high school, the me in middle school, or the me now in my 20s. Like you said, I mean, I know I may feel a little old, but that's not old. That's youth, right? And so how you can really, you know, deliver these to them is one, giving them that visual of a plane, right? Everyone loves a visual, whether you have a little model plane, you draw the plane, or you just pull up a picture of a plane or a video of a plane turning on the engines and going down that long runway and then slowly lifting up off into the air. That's like my favorite way to show people and explain it to them. And during this time, you can show them how that plane, it's just standing there, right? And maybe and when you're young, you do have a lot of goals and dreams, or maybe it's just simply you're struggling to be a good student. Maybe you're struggling with grades. Maybe you're struggling with faith or whatever it may be. It just kind of depends on, you know, what category of youth are in, because obviously each one holds their own problems or concerns. Like when I was in elementary, I don't, I'm not sure how much I would have understood that concept, if that makes sense. Right. Or I don't, didn't really have like goals or ambitions when I was young like that. But when you get older, those look different for everyone. So you just can tailor it to them, like whatever it is that they're trying for, or maybe they are not, you know, uh, they're not tapping into their full potential. Explain to them that life is really short. Obviously, you don't want to scare them, but you know, it is. And they are meant for greatness and they have greatness inside of them and just keep speaking that truth and helping them write down what it is that they want from life. Maybe it's just being getting better grades in school. Maybe it's being a more positive person or a better friend or a better kid to their parents or whatever it is, and just helping them come up with a plan on how they're going to implement that. And I like to call that the flight plan. And you can get a hold of me and and I can send that to you. And you can actually download it and hand it out to your kids. And in the flight plan, it says pilot. And so they write down their name. So like me, I'd write Lindsay. I'm the pilot. I'm in charge of my plane. And I decide that what I want to do is I want to be get better grades in school. So I write that at the end of the arrow and then I'm the plane. So there's a plane and there's an arrow. And at the end, I would write down what it is that my goal is. So getting better grades and all around that line, I'm going to write, how am I going to achieve that? So maybe they need to get a tutor. Maybe, you know, maybe there's other things that they need to do. Like um, 
you know, asking more questions in class, studying, you know, actually coming up with a plan that they're going to implement those and then making sure, holding them accountable, right? Because everyone needs to be held accountable. We, we don't live this, do this life alone. We need a team. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge lesson I learned even just writing this book. And so coming up with those things and teaching them how to overcome the hard times when they come, when they, because they're, they're not going to get good grades right away, right? They're going to get some bad test scores back. And so helping them overcome that and stay positive when that happens to know it's okay. Like we just got to keep working hard. We got to keep moving forward. We got to keep thrusting forward. And it just feels really good watching them go through those things and see them really enjoying it. Because I think a plane and the metaphor of all of it is really fun to picture. And I, I just think it really helps like youth to, you know what I mean? Open their mind to it. Like you said, it's easier when you have like right. the flight plan laid out, you show them a video of how a plane works. And, you know, that's obviously just for more like younger kids, what I just explained, but for like high school, it could be as much as like going to college or, you know, reading their Bible more, and you know, it can, you can use it for all of those things the same way I just said of how it would apply to getting better grades. Wow. That, that is powerful. My mind just kept going in it. You know, how did we can directly impl uh, implement this into working with youth and coaching youth and helping them go forward on this. Yeah. I really love this concept. I think it works really Thank well. Thank you. But this is not the only book that you've, uh, that you've authored, is it? No, it is not. Challenger Deep with Tammy Matheny. I got that one right here. I think <laughs> I actually got. No, I got it signed, but it's signed by Tammy, so I'm gonna have to get it. Get I'm gonna have to sign it too, so it's yeah, official. So, oh wait, I see a pattern here. I don't know if I don't know if our audience is seeing or not. The books here. We've got uh, one book talking about flying, and this one looks like about going into the water here. So that we got some. Uh, <laughs> flying and swimming or diving deep. Tell me about Challenger D. Tell me tell yeah. me about you or Tammy's book. Well, it's funny you said that. Cause so Tam it was Tammy's idea with all the stories and stuff like that. She mm -hmm. came to me and had all those stories and that, you know, she had this idea of what she wanted and she asked me to come up with a title. And so I was just really thinking, and I was like, well, when you're going through adversity, you feel like you're at the lowest part. You're, you're just at your lowest part, right? You feel like there's nowhere to go, but up. So I looked up what the lowest point in the world was in, or the, in the ocean, and it's called Challenger Deep. That's the lowest point in the ocean. You know, there's nowhere to go but up. And so I just thought it was fitting for, you know, the title of the book, because the book is actually about adversity and how to overcome adversity. And it's filled with a bunch of stories and fables. And you can read them like a devotional once a day, or you can read it, you know, all the way through. Mm -hmm. And at the end of each story, there's a reflection questions where, um, and a summary of, Tammy wrote a summary where she kind of just gives you an overview of what the story meant, like to her and her opinion. And then the reflection questions, which really help you dive deeper into that story and try to apply it to your life and team. And it's just a really awesome resource for everybody because we're all going through adversity every day, whether it's little, big, small, whatever it is. And so um, it's just an awesome book, a quick read. And it's really fun. The stories are and like they're really visual, too, which is nice. Did you guys intentionally do this? Because there's 30 stories, if I remember right, when I was reading this. Did you guys intentionally do this so it would work for a month? Uh, yes, I think I remember that's a, I just everything blends together a part of the process. But I feel like I specifically remember that's kind of like we're like, that's a good way to end on was with the 30 or 30 because not every month has obviously, you know, 31 month, uh, days and stuff. So yeah, but I'm on average, sure. you know, we're going to have 30. So. Right, exactly. On average, it's 30. So so cool. I like the fact that it's like that. And what I really love about it is what you said about the reflection questions, because it is what about four to six questions yep. after each one. Yep. And it has like also like uh, tools that you can, this was Tammy's idea. It was a really good idea. She gives you like resources too that mm -hmm. you can use to like Twitter accounts or, you know, maybe it's a podcast at the end mm -hmm. of the stories that you can go listen to, you know, to better understand these, you know, concept or stories. So, well, you know, I didn't see the Gen Z, Z show that must've been, I must've overlooked that as yep. being one of the resources. So I must it sure is. Yep. <laughs> It's a great That's going to be our, the revision volume two or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it's funny. Florida. So what's your favorite story in here? Oh my gosh. It changes like every time I think I have to talk about it, but I'm going to use the one I used last time. So I like the golf ball story and just to, mm -hmm. you know, sum it up pretty quick. Basically before, as you know, golf balls nowadays, they have those dimples in them, you know, those little divots. Yeah. But way back when they were actually just smooth round balls they had no dents in them. But people started to find, golfers started to find, 
that after they were hitting them, they'd get real like dent, you know, beat up, have dents in them. And then they realized, hey, these dented up balls are going a lot farther than the original smooth balls. And so eventually manufacturers took a hold of this concept and they started putting dents in all the little divots and dimples in all the golf balls. And basically the story just goes to show you the more, even though you're getting beat up and all throughout life, right? We're getting dents and beat up scars, hard times. No one's exempt from it. We all go through it. And you got to look at it as a positive is each time you go stronger, each time you get a dent in you or, you know, a hard time comes up that you have to go overcome each time it happens, you can go farther in life and you can move forward more confidently through whatever you're going through. And not only that, but the dents in the balls, the dimples actually make the ball more, get to the, like where it needs to go more accurately because of more accurate speed and aim, you know, to where it's trying to get to. And same thing with us, the more times I've, you know, maybe faced a set, well, if you want to call it a setback, even though it's a setup, but the mm-hmm. more times I face those things, I've got kind of gotten like pivoted a little bit to get to my, you know, my end goal a lot faster in the right direction in a more accurate way, if that makes sense. So it just relates to that golf ball story. And I just really like that one a lot. Mm. So uh, Lindsay, what's on the docket for you now? What What's, what's in the future for you? What can we look forward to from you? So right now I got uh, too many book ideas going on, but I'm currently writing one. I'm like, I think I'm like 12 chapters in. So but that one's got got to be a surprise, but definitely um, really um, honing in on uh, just being who you are, whatever that is, and learning just to embrace it and um, how that, you know, works in, you know, whether it's business or just your normal everyday life. And that one's not going to be a parable. It's just going to be me telling mm-hmm. a story. So. So how can our audience get in touch with you? If they want to find out more information, want to connect with you, where can they go to find Lindsay? So a great resource, one, email me directly. I'd love to hear any you know, questions or anything like that, or if you want my downloadable, um, but planetlindsay23 at gmail.com. And then also on Twitter, which is lindshall11. And um, that's probably the best place just because in there I have like my website and all my mm-hmm. links on my Twitter. So that's a great place too. And for our audience, if you missed any of that, if you're if you're watching this on YouTube, if you'll just look down, you see where I'm pointing people? If you look down, uh, you will find all those links in the show notes. And if you're listening, just go to the show notes on your podcast app and you'll find those links there. And they're all hyperlinked. All you got to do is click on them and it'll take you straight to them uh, and you can find those. So, Lizzie, thank you. Thank you for sharing with us those concepts. I really, really love it when we can explain things that that concepts visually um as a as a teacher i tried to when i was teaching i tried to relay everything with a story that's why sometimes i never got through lesson plans because i get (laughs) bogged down in in some kind of story i was telling and i began to realize that my students uh as as uh they got used to Mr. McGlam teaching would say hey if we can get him uh caught up on one of his stories we won't have to do any work today Uh, that's funny I actually knew that, but I enjoyed telling the story so much. I didn't mind it if they wanted to get sidetracked on that. Uh, I was, I was not. Maybe I wasn't as good a, a uh, uh, detailed, objective-oriented teacher as some others because I, I would just get involved with the stories too much. But I love the concept of when people are able to tell things through stories and tell things in a way of visualizing. So I really love the four forces. Thank you so love. much. I appreciate that. I love the way they express. I, I really think it's powerful. And then I'm thinking, hmm, we got some youth coaching material there. That's, uh, hmm. and That'd this is awesome. youth coaching material too. Oh, um, for sure. Yes. Super easy stories that are so easy to understand. So I can actually see this. And I'm sure Tammy was thinking the same thing because she came to our youth coaching certification last month. I can actually see this being a, a like taking a, a small youth group or you're taking a youth coach, you're, you're coaching a, a small group of youth and, and guiding them through this for a month. Oh uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. At any age, really just something to like, almost like a little book club you're doing th- it mm-hmm. together. Yeah. yeah. Talking over. It. Absolutely. I agree with that. I re- it's definitely, it's like a, like kind of like one of those like 30 day devotional, you know what I mean? For women, men, mm-hmm. kids that you really work through. I totally see it like that as well. You could even, uh, 
You could, I see 30, 15. You could even take, you know, maybe a couple of times a month and do a couple of stories and get it done in a, in a year very easily as well. Yes. You know, have a longer one if you want to impact them with it. So great oh, resources, yeah. great resources. And we'll have links because uh, you can get all these on Amazon, right? That's correct. Yes. Now we'll have the links to the books and stuff through Amazon uh, in the notes as well. So, so thank you again for being our guest and for our audience. Thank you guys for sticking with us. Listen, someone that you know needs to hear what we just talked about today, needs to hear these concepts, needs these resources. So please like and share and comment on this, on your apps, on your uh, on YouTube. And we'll see you again next week on the Gen Z Show.